Hey there you guys, how are you doing? I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the very first time, I currently serve as the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports. And I have been fortunate enough to have been in the photojournalism industry for the past 17 years. My goal for the channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. If you think that I could help you out, hit the like button and subscribe. Today I want to talk about a struggle that every sports photographer deals with, and that's getting consistently sharp photos. So here are four tips that you need to follow that will help improve your results. The very first tip is to make sure you are shooting with a high enough shutter speed. Sports photography is all about freezing the fast moving action, and that comes down to the shutter speed. If your shutter speed is too low, your photos will not look sharp due to motion blur. So it needs to be cranked high enough to stop human motion. For me, by default, when I walk into any venue, my shutter speed setting is set to 1 1600th of a second. But in reality, there are a lot of situations where you can get away with speeds lower than that. Some factors that come into play that determine your minimum shutter speed required will be the type of sport you're shooting, the level to play, and others. I discuss this in a lot more detail in the video that I've linked above. My second tip for getting more consistently sharp photos is to master back button focusing. Now, some photographers these days may argue that this is a little bit outdated with newer technology. However, I'm going to have to disagree. Even with newer equipment like the Canon R3 and their whiz-bang eye autofocus, or other competitive models, I'm still using the back button focus here. And I'll tell you why. The reason that back button focusing is so important is because I am smarter than the cameras. Now it's true, focus systems are getting really darn sophisticated these days, but they still can't reliably predict who your main target or main subject is, particularly when there are multiple subjects in your frame. So what the back button focusing system does is it allows you to tell your camera exactly who your target is and when to engage the autofocus system. You see, if you are using your shutter button to focus, you're essentially telling your camera to activate the autofocus system the entire time you're looking through the viewfinder. And when you do that, your camera simply isn't going to know exactly what you want to focus on in your frame. This is true even with sophisticated eye and head AF systems that we see now in cameras like the R3. I don't want the camera continually activating the autofocus while I'm looking off into the distance, left or right, or wherever. I don't want the camera and lens's focus shooting off into infinity because I happen to look left, right, or anywhere else but the subject in the frame. So because of that, I'm still using back button focus. By doing that, you're decoupling the two systems of focusing and actually shooting. My third tip to improving the sharpness of your photos is to know the games that you're covering and to anticipate the action. Sports move quick and depending on what you're shooting, it's going to be impossible to follow the ball or the puck through the air and get to your subject in time to get the shot. For example, in ice hockey, you're not going to be able to get the photo of a player taking a shot from the blue line and the goalkeeper making the save in the same sequence. So in this scenario, when I see players handling the puck along the blue line, instead of just focusing in on them and photographing them in isolation, I'll instead swivel towards the goalkeeper because I know the puck is going to be headed in their direction. Again, it's impossible to get the shooter and the goaltender in the same frame because you just can't physically move the camera and lens that fast. Yeah, that's as fast as I could go. The puck moves faster than that. So this was a little bit of an extreme example, but this situation is valid no matter what sport you are covering. Take American football, for example. Once the quarterback lets go of a pass, don't just continue to follow the ball in the air. Use your peripheral vision, anticipate where the play is headed, and give yourself a chance to capture that peak moment. My fourth and final tip for getting more consistently sharp sports action photos is one that I initially didn't really want to include in this video, 
but it's one that I have to talk about, and that is having newer and better gear. I mean, come on, you're just not gonna get the same consistent results with a AF system in a $600 Canon Rebel versus a $6,000 Canon R3. Likewise, you can't possibly expect the same level of detail or sharpness from a 70 to 300 millimeter kit lens versus a dedicated 300 f2.8. All that said, I've said it before and I will say it again, this better and this newer gear does not, it does not make you a better sports photographer. Now, what it will do, however, is it will probably give you the confidence that if you have your settings dialed in and you react to the play in time, you most likely will have a sharp photo. Now, is it of the right moment? Is it framed correctly? Or is it possible to crop it into a nice photo? Well, that's up to you. And if you've been watching my videos in the past 18 months, hopefully the answer is yes. So again, at the end of the day, having the top of the line gear isn't the end all be all for sports photography. Get to know the strengths and weaknesses of the gear that you do have and the gear that you can afford. Study the games you are shooting and become a technically sound operator and you'll give yourself a great chance to get some great results. Thank you very much as always for watching this video today. If you found it helpful or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button or subscribed. Don't forget to also ring the notification bell so that you can be alerted as to when new content drops. I do have quite a busy plate on my hands, but I try to come out with new videos every few weeks so you don't want to miss out. Until then, stay safe, happy holidays, and I will see you all again next time. Bye now.